So let's start. Uh, I was confused a little bit uh, because I have changed uh, the title of the slides a couple of times. I don't know about that <laughs> <have> discussion, <laughs> and I still have doubts um, if I choose the proper one. But I will expect feedback from you after the talk. Uh, okay, let's uh, recap what we have learned from last time from our previous talk. Uh, we have talked about different sources of technical debt, and we named it, it like deliberate technical debt. It's when uh, we know how to do right. And unfortunately, <laughs> we have forced it to do quick. Yeah, and this create a technical debt. It's very obvious. We easily can track it, uh, put to the backlog, and come back to it later and fix it. OK, uh, accidental outdated design. It's um, become a problem when we try to solve things that's not in our roadmap yet, and we intend to do that. I have faced it in a couple of solutions. Um, I believe the main uh, drivers here to try to create ideal solution that fits all needs and cover all cases. And I could rephrase it to develop our code for tomorrow, not for today. It's harder to investigate and it's require more discussion inside the team to elaborate it. But it's also like one of the points where we can put our efforts and improve things. Yeah. And uh, Bitro technical debt is uh, technical debt that's together when we develop our system for a long time, have a lot of incremental changes and no one knew the real initial idea of design maybe or everyone forgot about that and uh, it's similar to first one but with like uh, some order of magnitude of impact to the solution it also require impact uh, the velocity of the dev team and require um, refactoring maybe huge refactoring uh, resyncing some ideas and redesign them properly I believe that's all. And what we have discussed, uh, we have a uh, couple of words regarding over abstraction. Uh, when we see a lot of unnecessary abstraction in our code base, uh, it could be different sources of that. We intend to create uh, a lot of interfaces without necessity. We can create additional mocks, additional layers, etc. Yeah, so Abstraction is good, but with a certain precision. Um, also, we have discussed a pipe configuration. Uh, I haven't uh, faced it with this in my own experience, but I believe it's very common and uh, it's right when someone tried to make configuration as a common package and reuse it and make it uh, like separate abstraction for that. And that make configuration not belong to the application. It became some uh, third party package. And also that bites us a lot is a pack errors when errors doesn't contain answer to the question why for the user. So errors is our first source, uh, what we should use to debug our system and obtain information what's going on and how we can fix it. And usually it's very tight or messy and contain a lot of noise and proper information are absent there. So we should put more efforts to improve the situation. And also we have discussed uh, one source of technical debt or I don't know how it's called. Uh, when um, the team assumes that it works uh, with prototyping some stuff that never go to production and then easily lose control and management decide to use this prototype for production as minimum available product and it's very hard to maintain this code base and uh, it's become a lot of uh, people around this code base and uh, it's required factor or redesign from the scratch entirely okay so Mm, my aim was to elaborate more regarding this topic and maybe provide uh, some guidelines and design ideas how we can improve situation. 
And let's start from, from the Go itself. Uh, because the language arise most all engineering problems. Yeah, and uh, as I like to repeat, it was built by engineers for engineers. And uh, a lot of concerns was maybe arising recently in the internet that go on not proper language, it breaks the rules, it reinvents things, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I believe it's good because right now we see the root cause of this. Uh, first of all, is simplicity that was like the backbone of, of, of the of the Go itself, or as main driver or main design principle that was taken. Mm, but let's uh, look at some things like error handling, interfaces, and memory model. It's slightly different from other popular languages of nowadays, and. Uh, I believe you have some point in time when you struggle with them too and try to find your way how to deal with them. Um, I believe we can come back to this uh, later, but it's like a reminder that this thing was done uh, because the author thinks, uh, also thought that it is important to do things properly and help engineers to be more efficient in their daily life. Okay, and yeah, of course, language uh, have some level of fast. I can claim that Go is fastest language. We know that there are Rust, C++, etc. But uh, combination of simplicity and uh, velocity that we spent of develop things, it's pretty great with Go. And also, Go has this uh, data-oriented design in mind. So when we choose the data structure for our task properly, it's much more easy to team up with algorithm to solve the task. Rather when we start from algorithm and develop our data structure for it. Okay, let's come back to our abstraction. Yeah, I pick another source of information for you. It's, uh, I forgot the author name. Okay, <laughs> next time I'll write down it. <laughs> yeah, it's series of articles, and actually, I believe there was um, some conference talk regarding that. So, how we can use Go in the wrong way? Yeah, it's like comparing what we can do good and what could we can do bad with the same thing. Uh, when I think about our abstraction, uh, the two things came in my mind. Actually, three. Uh, for packaging, when we try to mess up with packages, uh, split our code, code between packages without uh, certain concerns and separation between responsibilities. So each package should have at least uh, something in common and provide some functionality and should be self-explanated. Uh, that's why uh, name is so important for the package and we should avoid the repeti repetition of this name. Uh, yeah, and vice versa, if we <laughs> want to mess up with our project and uh, make our very important to this project, we can use bad names and uh, uh, use packages like model, util, DAO, etc. So this name says almost nothing to developers. Uh, improper interfaces. Uh, we know that interfaces can go implement in their own way. So types should not explicitly define which interface it satisfies. So it's defined on during the compilation phase. And um, each client should define the minimal necessary interface that uh, required for the implementation. As this makes the code base is clear easy to understand, easy to support, and uh, vice versa. If we want to make uh, the life harder, we can overuse interfaces, use empty interfaces, uh, and no one can define <laughs> actually uh, what the hell going on and uh, what's got, got a part of the code is really necessary. We will use a lot of mocks for testing, etc., etc., etc. Okay, I, I believe I, explain 
enough for that. So try to stick to this rule that only users should define interfaces and define it like in minimal way. Okay, and uh, next thing I believe that's also confusing me uh, and uh, contribute to our abstraction is uh, wrong uh, separation by the layers. In a couple of products and projects, I see that Steam tried to adopt a clean architecture approaches uh, to organize code base and uh, I see how how they failed yeah so it's very hard to maintain these boundaries between the layers and how to understand which code belongs to which layers and how to split packages inside the layers uh, so uh, yeah uh, separating code by layers is good for testing maintainability purposes uh, but it also uh, very easy to break this balance between necessary breakdown and extra abstractions that bring this separation. Um, so what things I mentioned, yeah, each layer bring its own abstraction and that's definitely increased complexity. Um, it's very hard to control boundaries between layers. So it's require a lot of efforts during pod reviews and uh, everyone should understand these boundaries and how not break them. And uh, yeah, we saw a lot of similar package from different layers with the same purposes. Uh, this diagram actually is like a breakdown of our usual diagram of clean architecture, just like open from the inside. Okay, and here we see like three layers is our I believe it's presentation layer, business layer, and uh, data layer. Uh, regarding clean architecture, our term recently have a talk. I not, don't uh, find the actual presentation, but we have like video recorded on our YouTube channel. And also I advise to read regarding how not uh, misconcept with clean architecture. Um, I believe that's also helped. Mm. Another problem is uh, from another source, I believe, or maybe it's a similar source, yeah. Uh, also idea of hiding costs uh, bring the Bill Kennedy. Um, it's about uh, using pointers instead values. Yeah, in Go, everything passed by values, but when, when we pass pointers to some function as argument or method, uh, we make it like, uh, hiding from the user what's going on inside. Are we going to mutate this failure or we just use it? So it's hard to understand. In a good approach, we should easily understand the data flow and how data been transformed. Yeah, so, uh, and of course, <laughs> if we use uh, keep data immutable as much as possible, that also helps a lot to understand our code base and uh, understand the data flow itself. And vice versa, if we use everywhere pointers, uh, change it inside without like uh, notice that uh, it's in create a more complex uh, model of the program and it's harder to understand, harder to support. Uh, I need it like hidden costs. So for us as engineer, it's very important to understand uh, the cost of this solution. So. Uh, understand the impact uh, on memory, on timeline uh, of this execution. And we also should, every, every time, uh, some under, understanding of that. So, and if we make that clear, it's help us a lot. And if not, we should revisit each uh, piece of code and investigate it, evaluate it, and only then move further. Okay, so using, using structure with pointers, it's also um, make things worse, yeah. Okay. Um, and I believe regarding panics, uh, it's also <laughs> very important not overuse it. A uh, good example of when we can use panics is when our hard drive is die or like network art is flowing something like that, but not when we got integer instead of string. Yeah, so our code base should uh, 
handle error properly. And that's why errors, as you remember, uh, was error handling was resyncing by the design in Go and we have explicit error handling everywhere. And even if our code base consists, contains most of the, most of our code base is error handling, it's also good because uh, error pass, it's also pass of execution and it should be handled properly. And this percentage is like uh, some researchers provide information that 92% of failures of uh, um, solution is uh, due to bad error handling. Or we forget to handle, or we handle it properly, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. But the main root cause of failures is uh, bad error handling. And uh, we can mix up, uh, <laughs> like, um, try to do some evil if we uh, return in errors and even not returning, just panicking everywhere or, you, or use panic if error function, etc. So it's make harder to understand. And uh, I believe it's like valid uh, robustness of our code base. Okay. Um, I believe more guidelines. I actually I want to put them all, but <laughs> it's a pretty huge list, so I just uh, revisit uh, all the top of them, of uh, the high level view. But yeah, I encourage you to go by this link. Uh, it's inside Ultimate Go Training uh, Design Guidelines by Bill Kennedy. You can revisit them, and uh, there are a couple of important parts, uh, integrity. Uh, so integrity is also about reliability as was I mentioned before with um, Panikin, but it's more about uh, understanding of each allocation that goes in, inside our code base. Because if you look in um, at our solution, <laughs> like and, and the code, so everything is going on inside is reading and writing some memory. Yeah, yeah, of course, not only reading and writing, yeah, some data transformation going on also, but actually that's all we do all the time. And uh, our reliability depends on that. So uh, if we lose our control here, we can lose reliability as well. Uh, why less code? Uh, because there are some statistics that uh, for one, thousand lines of code there are like from 50 to 15 to 50 errors. So it's mean each 20 lines of code contain an error, a bug. So when we try, when we write less code, we produce less bugs, like obviously semantic. Uh, yeah, and integrity also depends on error handling. It's like repetition on this a little bit, but it's really very important. Um, Maybe I something missing, but let's continue readability. Uh, readability and I myself confusing because uh, previously I mixed it with simplicity. Yes, yeah, simplicity read to readability, but it's totally different things and achieving in different way. So uh, readability is how we structure our code base, how we dealing with our system in overall and how we uh, help the system to become more comprehensive to others. And uh, the main, I believe, uh, drivers here should be answered to the questions. That we, not the questions, the principles that we should follow, that we should write code, not easy to write, but easy to understand. And it's a slight difference here <laughs> between graphics. Mm, uh, okay. I believe I must delete something regarding this data. Um, yeah. Yes, code must never lie. It means when we over-optimize our code base, uh, its behavior become unclear for us, especially for others. So uh, each function, each method should provide uh, exact value as we expect. So if our code makes something that we not expect, it's like confusing us, it breaks our model mental model of the program. We shouldn't do that. 
we should account our code base to average developer. So it should be easy to un to explain uh, as the developers what's going on inside the program and not depend on, uh, not rely on that some smart guys will understand it by itself. So we all time should uh, understand the average level inside our team and uh, adapt our solution based on that. And remember that Go code works with real machine. It's not like Java or C sharp, whatever. And uh, we can use a lot inside of that. So we can gain some efficiency. Uh, we can use, like, producing less code, we can achieve more performance, etc. And also Go, Go Pro itself provide a, a lot of abstraction to handle that. So we shouldn't go inside the assembler right by our, our own. Um, okay. And uh, regarding simplicity, uh, there are some talks from Rob Pike, I believe, uh, that simplicity is complicated. Uh, it's very hard to build uh, simplicity from the start, uh, and it's hard to design it, and uh, especially hard to uh, make ideal solution. Yeah. So um, what I encourage you to do is to focus on your current task and try to close it and then perform some updates and uh, rethinking in some iteration to improve your solution, not vice versa. Uh, regarding complexity sells better. Mm -hmm. Regarding previous one, when we already have the solution and uh, we force it to push it to production, it's okay, and yeah, we definitely generate some technical debt, but uh, complexity means bad readability. Yeah, so make things simple is require extra efforts, and uh, not every team, not every project requires it. Yeah, so uh, when you just provide the solution, it's maybe complex, but it is easy to read and it is easy to maintain, it's easy to verify. And encapsulation is what our package system provides to us. You already know that you can do evil with it. Yeah, and you should encapsulate uh, your logic properly with proper composition by the packages and provide the better naming for the packages. And each package should contain and serves one purpose, uh, not mixing this up because it's very easy to do. Um, regarding performance, yeah, and here's a link to these guidelines. Uh, that's uh, what I already, uh, I believe, talked. So when you, we use more efficient algorithm, of course, we achieve more performance. But uh, as you remember, this list was like numbered and performance is the last one. So, so you can came to performance only when you finish with integrity, readability, and simplicity. Yeah, so if simplicity achieve, it's not easy. <laughs> you understand that performance, <laughs> you shouldn't achieve at all. Uh, in most cases, performance will be just enough. Uh, yes, some tasks require from us to make tricky things and it's make a uh, solution, our code base, uh, hard to read, hard to understand, very complex, hard to support, and it's good chance in some point of time it just will be uh, rewritten or just go to trash. Uh, yeah, a couple of principles regarding performance. We shouldn't never guess about performance. We should measure and our measurement should be, must be relevant. Um, we should provide before decided something is performance is, is critical. So performance should be as uh, quality attribute of your application defined it earlier and should be properly measurement, not on the production side or something critical is happening. It's um, already too late to do something. And uh, tests that you know you are correct because it's very easy to mix up with performance measurement and 
solution. Um, first of all, you should achieve the valid result and only then take care of performance. We all know this anti-pattern that is premature optimization. So when we don't achieve the actual result, we don't know that our solution is valid, but we already take care about performance. It's wasting of our efforts and time. Um, what engineering is related to that? Uh, so the idea is that code base, uh, let me guess how it's name it. Again, when we concentrate on the performance, it uh, makes things complex. And when we try to use just enough solution to close the task, it's usually work and we shouldn't take care a lot about performance. Yeah, so this principle is about that. So we shouldn't put a lot of efforts without necessity. And we and understand the the proper le level when this is enough. Okay, <laughs> I believe yeah, I have finished the fast for you, <laughs> but I already like mixing some concepts with my mind. Uh, good. So, any question from your side, or we switch to Ukrainian?